All right, so what I did here was the wife came and she says, oh, she says, is this going to be out okay outside? I says, well, it can be. It depends on what I do with it. <clears throat> I go, why? She goes, gee, if you put our address on it, she says, that would be nice on the front of the house. Well, I said, before we go nuts, let's see how it comes out first. But meanwhile, what I had done was I sanded it down. I was going to go get some uh, stripper and strip it, but I said, let me sand it down a little bit. So I got the belt sander on it, and they uh, vibrate, and I sanded it down. And then I says, now the stain kill primer that I used that was by, uh, was a primer that I used by uh, Rust-Oleum. That right there. I primed that before with this on this and what it did was it reacted to the stain that was on the board like a paint remover would. It got all you know cr crumbly looking and I said well that's, that's a primer that's not supposed to do that. You know it says that it's made for woods, metals, concrete, plastics, you know all kinds of shit. So it's, it should have worked. But it didn't. So I sanded it all down and now I used an oil base kills, which is a stain kill. Uh, so I said, let me put that on there. Now the only thing with that is it's oil based, so I'm gonna have to wait for it to dry, which would take another day. So but that's where I'm at. Now that's just one coat sucked up quick, dries actually it's drying quicker than I expected. That's because it went into fresh wood. Now that's called a step. I don't know if you can see that or not. How do you get a step? Is that if you're painting and you start in the middle, you're going to get a step where you put that brush. So you always want to start on an end that isn't painted yet and brush into your paint. And then you won't get the step. You can lift the brush off anywhere you want, but you can't start the brush in the middle of wet paint like here to here because you'll get a step on it and that's what that is so you always want to start from the end and brush into it that's why they tell you to keep your ends wet when you're painting a house and brush into them otherwise you'll get that one spot will kind of overlap a little bit and it'll look a little different than the rest of the house because it's a little thicker there as well so um, but if you keep the ends wet where you can brush into it and brush it right across it you know, and brush right into where you already did, you know, and every time you do that, you're bringing the paint over and you're getting a larger, even surface, if that makes sense to you. All right, so I'm going to let this dry overnight. I'll come out tomorrow, I'll put another coat on it, and if it needs another one after that, I'll do another one, and then uh, we'll take it from there. Now, I also found some grain of weeds. They call them wheat grains, grain of weeds. They're small. Here's one right here. It's a small white, and they use them a lot on little meters, like on CB radios and things. Uh, but this one, these are 12 volts. It, it gets way too hot, way too hot, hot to where you can't even touch it. So what I'm going to do is, now that it's cooled down, I'm going to apply a lesser voltage to it. Uh, and then I'll see at that point uh, how it reacts as far as heat and things when it gets a lesser voltage so that's going to be put that in there my next uh, test all right i'll put maybe uh six volts on it or so you know because then i can always run it off of a small uh transformer you know these things these are actually little transformers you know some people call them inverters um, power supplies it's a power supply but um, like this one's six or seven volts all right so I can plug it in I'll get six or seven volts out of it well if this doesn't get hot and it works well with six or seven volts well, you know what then I can put a bunch of these inside and not have to worry about it so that's again I'll be testing that at another time turn the meter off and uh, it's three o'clock so I'm gonna get ready and go in the house let me shut down and uh, it's hot out I did a little more painting 
The painting is taking longer than I expected, only because, let me move this over, only because I, uh, with the heat, the heat is driving us nuts. I gotta get a drink, hold on guys. And uh, with the heat, you know, you go out there and, and the next thing you know, you're, you're pouring sweat. You know, you drink tons of water, which you have to, otherwise you'll dehydrate. You gotta stay hydrated. Um, but, you know, you're just sitting there and the sun's glaring against the house, glaring in your face. So I said, and the humidity, it went up. It, today it was nice when I were first walked out. But uh, for some reason, it seemed to have uh, climbed, so it's hot. So with that being said, uh, we stopped. So tomorrow, the priming, all the priming will be done. And half the house is already finished. The back of the house will go fast. The other side of the house will go pretty quick. And then at that point, we're done. So, if it was a good day, we can probably paint and finish the house in one day, once it's primed. Because I, excuse me, because I'm using an oil-based primer, you know, we can't just go and paint or prime and then start over and paint. We gotta wait a day. I prefer to wait two days, but the whole back is primed. And I'm thinking about tearing down that generator shed and just buying one. Um, or I may even think about, I got to price it out, buying a whole new generator uh, and uh, tie it right into the gas, the natural gas, and then uh, have it set so if the power's off for more than five minutes, it'll kick on by itself, and uh, when the power turns back on, the generator will turn off and we don't have to worry about it. And then I'll keep this one as a backup just in case. So that's another thought. I got to find out. Um, actually, I even want to find out what it's going to cost to have the whole thing done and installed. You know, so this way I don't have to do any of it. You know, the, uh, the units can't be much. I'm thinking maybe three grand. And uh, what are they going to charge to hook it up? You know, I mean, uh, again, it, it can't be much. You know, what are they going to charge me? A day's work for two people? A thousand dollars? I mean, that's a lot. So, we got to see. I'm going to make some phone calls and see what I come up with. See, the problem with around here, and I'm sure you guys know you have areas the same way. If not, you probably already live in that area. Um, you go to a dealer, for instance, a car dealer, this is the best way to explain it. Like Tom, when he went to the dealer the other day to get his tire fixed, they told him, can't fix it, it's got a hole in the sidewall. And because it's only got three, whatever it is, and it's supposed to be ten, and, uh, and the other tire's got three, so they can't just replace one tire, they got to replace them both, and it's going to cost them 400 bucks. Yeah, but well, you know what? The dealers around here, and a lot of the, 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 the just stores in general, anybody that's giving you um, labor as well, they're so used to the people around here saying, oh, okay, just do it. Because, and I'm not, by no means am I in that category. However, a lot of the people in this town just say, okay, do it, because they don't care. They have money to just do it. So the dealers and, and certain businesses, um, you know, that require a product and a labor, uh, that there's used to just gouging because the people in the town will say, oh no, just do it. You know, not thinking about it. Now with Tom, he went to get that tire fixed, said he can't, it's in a sidewall. So uh, and it's going to cost 400 bucks, see, because they're talking to an older guy and he's in Branford, even though he doesn't live in Branford. That's where he bought the car from, so that's where he's at. And they say, oh, you need uh, two new tires. 
Well, he says, I gotta check on my wife first. He goes down the street, the hole wasn't in the sidewall. The hole was in the thread. They stuck a rubber plug in it, and it's fine. Hold on a minute. And then they're talking. Not good. Then they're talking to him about the, the nitrogen, because I guess he has his tires filled with nitrogen, which the dealer charged him extra to do. They told him, well, if we do this, you know, it's a better ride, it's better on this, better, but about, you know, and here he is leasing a new car, so, you know, they tack on all this shit, and it's only an extra couple of dollars a month, but in the long run, you're paying a lot of money for it, and if you get a leak, what do you do? Well, in this case, he had a leak. They wanted 400, he said, I'll have to get back to you. He takes it over to another place over here in Brantford called the Whippet, which I had told him about. It's a family-run place. They went out, they looked at it, he said, no, the hole was in the tread. All right? So they didn't even take the tire off. They walked out there, they plugged it. Okay. All right, they checked it. He says, well, what about the, the nitrogen or whatever it is they put in there? He goes, well, we haven't got that. He says, I'm going to have to put air in it. He goes, oh, whatever you got to do. So they go out to check the air pressure. And they come to find out that they overinflated all the tires. Because they're charging by, I guess, the pound. You know, or the volume that they're using. So by overinflating, they got more money out of them. All right? So they didn't have to put any air in the tire. Because it was overinflated with nitrogen. Or whatever it is they put in there. Yeah, but that's just the way... That, this town is. Now, I'm sure other towns are the same, and there's, regardless of where it is, it happens, but yeah, it's just, there's gouging going on. It's getting, so you just can't trust, you know, uh, anybody anymore. You know, and dealers, forget about it. They're the biggest. No matter, They'll be your friend and kiss your ass. Get your money and forget your name. All right. Oh, I said that? No, uh, what's the contract say? I want to put it in the contract. Yeah, right. Okay. Let's blame it on the contract. All right, guys. I'll catch you later. I know I've been slamming you with vids. I'm sorry. You know, and uh, you watch what you can, and I appreciate it. That's all. And uh, catch you later.